Church in Los Angeles. I want to pray for uh, for Pastor Tony, Sister Angelina. I want to pray uh, for the surrounding churches, Riverside, Rialto, San Bernardino. Uh, tonight, I want to ask if we could pray for Pastor Alex Alcido. Amen. Uh, he has an important meeting tomorrow. Uh, so it's, it's very important it's, it, it, it deal with him. It's a personal need he has. And uh, we need God to move in that for him. That God would just help him. Amen. And just be with his family and in and, 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 and the church. Amen. That God would just really just pour out his spirit upon the situation. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I want to just pray that we come together as a church and just believe in God for Pastor Alex. Amen. Great man of God. Great example. So I just want to pray that God would just continue to help him. Amen. Uh, I want to pray for the outreach on Saturday. Amen. Uh, the pastors, they're, they're excited. They're coming. They've been telling their churches. So this Saturday, 11 o'clock, amen. I uh, want to pray that God will just be with us. God will help us. That God's going to move and uh, and open up hearts, amen. That God will bring new souls, amen, as we prepare for the revival next week, amen. And and all the construction and everything. So I want to pray that God will just help us complete construction, open up doors, amen, and, and just have everything completed on time, amen. Amen. So, you know, this, this, uh, this evening, you can trust in God. You know, we trust a lot of things in this world. We trust in our finances. We trust in our jobs. We trust in our spouses. Amen. Today's Valentine's Day. Amen. Many people are trusting in love. Amen. But there's a lot of people sitting at home with broken hearts. Amen. One thing that you can't, you can't, um, you, you, you can always count on is that God will never fail you. Amen. So you can trust in God this, this evening, man. So trust in God. Believe in God. Allow God to help you and bless you this, this evening. Pray that God will just open up open up hearts, amen, and bless his word this evening, amen. So you know what? You trust God, amen. So let's let's bow our hearts, amen. Let's worship God, amen. Let's open up in prayer, amen. So let's worship God this evening. Hallelujah, my Lord Jesus, I praise you, O God. Glorify you, O Lord. Magnify your precious name. We thank you, my Lord. God, my Father, we thank you, God, this evening, God, for this time and opportunity, God, you have presented us, God, to hear your word. God, I pray, God, for the needs brought before your precious throne of grace, God, that you just help us and guide us, God, that you just continue, God, to pour out your spirit, God, and meet the needs of your people, God. God, I pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, God, that you bless your word and open up hearts, God. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You take time to greet someone this, this evening. Oh, that's different. What a people. Now I can be here to defend him now. Few announcements just want to remind you of our regular service amen uh, every sunday morning every sunday morning at, at 10 a.m every wednesday at 7 amen uh don't forget friday this friday amen we'll call in for a, a fasting prayer amen we'll be fasting from eight o'clock tomorrow night until eight o'clock friday night amen 24 hour flat fast amen and we're praying for for this revival, for the outreach, uh, amen, for everything, for our church. We're, we're seeking God for our church, amen, in this fast, amen. So we're fasting Friday, uh, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, so you can have dinner tomorrow, have early dinner, just don't eat for the rest of the night, and then go to work. <laughs> Worship God, praise God all day, amen. Come to prayer at 7 on Friday night, and then after prayer, amen, we can go get some to eat if you'd like, amen. Amen, and, and just have a good time. But we're gonna we're gonna fast and pray and believe in God. Amen. So that's uh tomorrow. Amen. <coughs> um, uh, for Friday, <laughs> remember we're gonna pray and we're gonna worship. Amen. But we're praying for for this revival. We're praying for for souls. We're praying for our church and for the for the outreach. Amen. Uh, the outreach is at uh, is at eleven. Amen. Uh, next week, we're going to have the revival, amen, two-day revival with uh, Pastor Martin Duran from uh, El Florido, uh, 
Tijuana. Amen. It's going to be a really, really good time. Amen. I encourage you to come, but I encourage you to invite someone. On, on Saturday, the surrounding churches are all going to be here. We should be pretty packed. Amen. We're going to have, we'll have all of our chairs back by then. Monday, I'm picking the rest of them up. And, uh, and we're going to set all these chairs up. We're going to be turned completely sideways. And we're going to have the white chairs for, for overflow. Um, but we should have a full house on, on next Saturday. So come. You're not going to want to miss it. Amen. Pastor Martin and, and Sister Foley, they're great, great people. Amen. And Pastor Martin, amen. He's he's an international minister. He preaches he preaches all over the place. Amen. One of his disciples in Tijuana, they're getting ready to go to Spain. Amen. And start a new work in, in that country. Amen. So he's part of big things. God's using his life. You, you're not going to want to miss this. Amen. The March 9th. Amen. March 9th, Saturday, March 9th. There is a woman's fellowship at the Riverside Church. Amen. It's going to be with... Uh, Sister Lily, amen, and Sister Gloria from, uh, Lily's from the El Central Church, and Gloria's from uh, Mexicali. Uh, Gloria, her, her husband, uh, Santiago, he's been here before. Uh, they pastor it in Mexicali, and Sister Lily, they're, her and her husband, Edmund, they're great friends of ours. Yeah. We've known yeah. them for 30 years, amen. And she's going to be, uh, they're going to be ministering to the women on March the 9th, Saturday, March 9th at 10 a.m., you do not want to miss this. Go with Sister Martha. It's going to be a good time. They always bless the women. They have good food and they do all that stuff. They do more for the women on these things than they do for the guys. Amen. They send us out there and give us a piece of chicken and tell us to go home. Amen. You guys are going to get a feast. Amen. It happens every time. There's usually giving out gifts and everything else, man. One thing I get is a kick in the butt and say, hurry up and go back and be a man. But it's going to be a good time for you guys. Amen. So I want to encourage you. It's going to be in Riverside at our, at our Riverside Church, our sister church. Amen. Uh, Good Friday service is our corporate service. We're having our corporate service. Remember, every two months, we're having a corporate service between the four churches of the Inland, of the Inland Empire. Uh, we're doing a corporate service every other month. Uh, Good Friday will be our next corporate service, March 29th at 7 o'clock here at our church. Amen. We're hosting this one. So here at our church, we're going to have everybody's going to be here. Um, we need all hands on deck for this one. We're going to need everybody to help. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a really good time. Good Friday service. Amen. You know you're gonna have a good time because I'm not the one preaching that service. Amen. So you're gonna you're gonna enjoy yourselves. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And then don't forget our Bible conference, April first to the fifth. Let me know if, uh, your dates. Pastor Tony Hernandez already called me. Uh, to, he wants to confirm dates, so um, I'll be asking for dates by by the first uh, weekend of March, so we can settle in the dates and I can reserve the rooms. If you're interested in going, let me know. For the full week, partial week, whatever it is you want to do, amen. But that's coming up really quick, amen. It's April 1st to the 5th, amen. These are all the announcements. We're going to lift up an offering, amen. So let's worship God. Amen. <laughs> this evening, amen, you give with an open heart, amen. Uh, as you can see, we've got, we've got the first batch of chairs back, um, all this is possible by your guys' uh, faithfulness, your liberty, uh, and trusting in God. Amen. Yes. Um, I was, I was uh, telling Angel a while back that one of the things, you know, like the church, we don't have an excess of, we don't have excess amount of money. We don't have, amen, where, where we just have a, a bunch of money just sitting in the bank. It's, that's not the way the church is. We just, we're, not, we're not that church yet. Amen. But what we do have is we have faithful men and women that are, that are being faithful to the things of God. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to make sure that everybody understands that their money is not in vain. It's going somewhere. Our mission, we send mission money uh, to uh, Peru and Colombia every month. Uh, we're involved with overseas works. Uh, we're planning a trip for next year to possibly Spain and, and, it, and Italy. And, and all this, everything we do, this whole, I, I, I made it a point. God has been bugging me to tear down this wall. Amen. And, uh, and all this has been done by, by your guys' uh, uh, faithfulness. This is, this is your investment. Amen. And one of the things I take pride in, and, and I was talking to Angel about it, I said, I said this, this time, this is the third time for Drupal Valley that I've um, done construction for our church. First one was when we got the building on Mission and Opal. 
And the second one was when we opened up this place. And now we're doing it again after just two years, we're tearing down walls. And this time, hey amen, it's been great because it's been our church doing the whole thing. Uh, you guys have been faithful, been helping physically, but it's been your guys' it's been your guys' giving us and a lot of it's um, in the past, my wife and I we've had to really sacrifice it and do it. And man, you have no idea how proud I am of this church to be able to come together and, and make this happen. So you know what? Continue answering the call of God, continue being a blessing to the things of God. And God is doing things. God said to tear down the wall. He's been bugging me for a year. We tore down the wall just in time. It just so happens it lined up just in time for the um, the revival. And I'm believing in God that he's going to fill this place. Amen. Amen. So let's 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 uh, trust in God together. Amen. So you be faithful. You bring your tithes. Uh, give offerings and support our missions. Amen. As we can as we reach the world for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our hearts as Brother Angel bless the gift and the giver. Father God, we ask that you bless these tithes, these offerings that are brought before you this evening, God. We ask that you bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, they raise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. I'm going to sing that song for offering until we get a full song service, which reminds me, um, once we're done with the construction and revival, we'll start our song service practice again. Amen. You guys didn't know. We got a little band going. Amen. We're getting there. One step at a time. <coughs> God's doing big things. So I've been reading reading the Bible for some time now I've been I've read the Bible through the years I've read a lot of the Bible um, we uh, we were in Texas last week this last weekend and and I get on the plane and I took a quick nap which was amazing because I never sleep on planes um, and and uh, when I when I when I open my eyes there's nothing to do. It's not like you can go for a walk, eh, man. It won't let me on the wings. So I began to read. I opened up my phone and start reading the Bible. And and I read more than half of uh, of Exodus, amen. Eh, about about Moses and, and how he how God challenged him to go and free the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but take them from the hands of Pharaoh and how hard headed the Pharaoh was. And every time I've read the story multiple times through my life, but every time I read it it becomes more and more vivid. And I think it's because one is maturity. I've gotten older and I think differently. And and two is is the more you get understanding, the more you read, the more the more you have the more you have an understanding. The longer you're saved, the longer you're living for God, the more you begin to understand things a little bit differently. You begin to God begins to reveal. And today I want to talk about, about scripture. I want to talk about the Bible. You know. The Bible's been the foundation of my salvation. Without the Bible, I would have, I would, I wouldn't have any direction. If I, without the Bible, I'd be walking in darkness. I would be stumbling around like as if I, as if I was blind. Because the Word of God is powerful, and in it we find life. In the Bible, it's so powerful we find life, we find restoration, we find resurrection, we find healing and deliverance. This is what you find in the Bible when you read the Bible. It, and, and, and the thing you got to know about the Bible, the Bible is a spiritual book. It's not, it's not a physical book. The physical, the physical element of the Bible doesn't make sense to the common person. When you give your life to God, you begin to seek God because you want to you love God, you're wanting to, you want to you want to live for God and, and you, you come into God, it's a different approach. It's a spiritual Bible. Living for God is spiritual. It's not. It, we're living. We live in a world where it's physical elements, but it's a spiritual thing. So if we take time in our life to read the Word of God. We will discover the answers to the questions that you have. Not just not just for your mind and your body, but you're going to find the answers for your soul. Remember what, what's what's the purpose of, of salvation? Remember this Bible says so you can you can raise your hand and ask questions. 
give input. What's the purpose of salvation? What's the purpose of, 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 of the whole thing of why Jesus Christ died on the cross? It was to bring other people to heaven. It wasn't just so, okay, God, I take my salvation. It's mine. Nobody can have it. Nobody talk to me. I'm going to just make my way to heaven by myself. No, like I, I've said this over and over again. The day you get the day you get to be selfish is the day you get to receive Jesus Christ. After that, we spend the rest of our life serving God, bringing people to the kingdom of heaven. That's what we do. We constantly are always trying to let people know that, hey, you know what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God has saved my life, and he can change your life. And you know what? Just as God died for me, he died for you too. So we ought to understand that, you know what? The Bible is alive. <coughs> I want to I want to read Paul 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 is my favorite writer. I love Paul in the Bible because of his boldness, the way he is. But everybody thinks it's just the boldness of Paul. Without really when you when you begin to understand who Paul is, you'll you'll realize he has a lot of humility behind him. He's very sincere and kind-hearted and he he's a very humble man who stands strong on his on his biblical belief, on his Christian belief. And, and and in the Bible, outside of Jesus Christ, if I'm going to liken myself to somebody, it's going to be Paul. And Paul writes in, in book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. There's the English Standard Version. It says this in the book of Hebrews, <coughs> 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is living and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him whom we must give account. This is why it's important that we take time to read the Word of God. Because the Word of God, it, it, it's life. The Word of God has life. If you want to live for God, see, we, we love God, right? We love God. We, we made it today. The hardest thing about, about this whole thing is just showing up and getting through the door. That's the hardest part. That really is the hardest part. Make it through the door. Once you get through the door, you realize, ah, man, this wasn't too bad. It wasn't so bad. It was all right. But man, getting through that door, man, it's like it's like as if there's a giant long hallway and you're never gonna make the end of it, right? That's that's the hardest part. But once we get here, you know you love God. You talk to people, they love God. People love God. But the thing is, is we spend so much time with our feeling of the love of God rather than seeking God and who He is. Taking time to read the Bible, understanding. Understanding the messages that are in the Bible and the words that are being spoken and how to live for God. You see, <laughs> living for God is much more than, oh, I love God. Oh, I love God. I love God. Yeah, I love God. Oh, I just love God. God is love and love is God. It's much more than that. Because when you read the Bible, you begin to see that God has, has done so many things. So have you, ever, have you ever read a scripture that really spoke to you? And, 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 and it'd be a scripture that 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 you felt was placed there just for you you know scripture like man lord you you today i opened up my bible and that scripture jumped out of the page at me you ever felt that way like man that how did who what the thing? man god is real hey, amen i think we've all done that right hebrews 4 says says that the word of god is alive it is sharper than a two-edged sword, bringing division between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. What that's talking about, this speaks to the battle that, that takes place between our flesh and God. You know that there's a battle between your flesh and God? So let me define flesh. In Christianese, because Christians, we speak our own language for some reason, we we'll use words that most people don't always use. Like We'll say flesh, right? That just means your sinful nature, your who you are. You know, we're we're born sinners, right? It's through God's grace that we receive salvation, yeah. that we receive the righteousness of God. We weren't we weren't given to it. We weren't given it to us. It wasn't given to us at birth, although babies are innocent until the age of accountability. 
uh, up until them that they, they're they're saved by grace. But what I'm talking about, we're naturally born sinners. One of the, one of the most 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 used word by a child is the word mine, right? Mine. It's mine, right? Mine. Why do they say mine? It's mine. Leave it alone. It's mine, right? We're, we're, we're naturally selfish individuals who we are, right? It's, 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 we want it for me. It's me first, then maybe them. Yeah. But that's, that's the way our mentality is. But <clears throat> the Word of God, it's, it's so alive that it's always battling for us. The battle that goes on between our flesh and with God, that there, there's such a spiritual battle that is taking place. This battle, you know this battle that's taking place? You ever feel, and be honest, you don't have to raise your hands, right? just be honest within yourself. Have you ever been, you go to church and, 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 and you're doing good, and, and then you just get this one crazy idea, right? And you know it's wrong. It's going to probably bring sin into your life. And you're thinking, man, if I do that, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it back to church because I'm probably going to feel right walking in, right? You know, you know. But then we, we let the, the idea just kind of fester within us and we, we try to work it out in our own brains that it's okay. And, and, and those kind of ideas happen. This is reality. This is, this is the reality of life. We get these ideas where we think we know better. And we know that's the battle of the flesh and the soul, right? That's what, that's what the Bible talks about. It says that, that, that it's sharper, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, right? It, because, because who you are and who God is, is there's always a battle. Because God wants good for you. We want good for us as long as it's our idea first. If you don't believe me, if you've ever raised kids and you've had a teenager, you'll know what I'm talking about. You want the best for them. You're raising them, you're teaching them, and you're giving them the right stuff, but you don't know what you're talking about because they know better. And I say teenagers, but nowadays, even little kids do the same way. Little kids are smarter than I think we ever been as teenagers. They just know they know too much now. And if you don't think so, just ask for it. But it says <clears throat> there's a battle between soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. The soul, the soul is the very thing that the devil's trying to take. The soul is the thing that the devil is always going to fight for. The spirit is the life of God inside you. The Holy Spirit that is trying to keep you going in the right direction. You know, the Holy Spirit's always trying to get you and guide you. It's that it's that it's that voice that's telling you no 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 don't do that right, and it's not it's not your conscience because your conscience in the world will tell you that it's okay to drink, you know just don't pass out right that's your conscience don't pass out because we're gonna take advantage of you that's your conscience. The Holy Spirit will tell you hey you probably shouldn't be drinking at all. That's the Holy Spirit. It's keeping you away from sin. Your conscience is gonna tell you hey you know what you should probably shoot the gun at their feet. And you'll be okay. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you, maybe you shouldn't pull that trigger. Right? It, there's a difference. One's conscience, one's the Holy Spirit. Don't get them confused. But the Spirit is that thing that, that, that is inside you. It's helping you keep going the right direction. These are the things that it says the battle. Right? This is the battle. Joints and marrow speaks of our flesh. That is continuously fighting to go back to the things that satisfy us. There's things that satisfy our, 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 our bodies. Things that satisfy us. Sometimes they satisfy us physically. Sometimes they satisfy us mentally. Sometimes they satisfy us emotionally. I've seen people walk away from God because of an emotional feeling. But they make me feel good. They make me feel better. Meanwhile, God's changing their life. And this happens over and over and over again, where people will leave God because of a feeling rather than what God is trying to do in their life. Okay, And this is the joint and marrow that the Bible is talking about. In verse 12, it says, discerning the thoughts, and here's the scary part, and intentions of the heart. This is how powerful the Word of God is. This is how powerful the Word of God is. That it discerns your thoughts and the intention of your heart. It's not just, it's the, when it says discerning your thoughts, it means it's, it's sees them. 
it, it views them. It knows your thoughts. It's, it's, it's putting them in order for you. It's discerning your thoughts. But it says it's also discerning the intention of your heart. And that's a scary one. The intention of your heart. Because our heart, we want to do right. But man, they make me feel so good. It'll be all right. God forgives anyways. Right? And there's always that, that battle. Okay? But this is what the Word of God is. So the Word of God is extremely powerful. Any questions, any input so far? Okay. We can read a scripture and feel good and get all get that fuzzy feeling inside of us, which sometimes we need. Sometimes we need. Sometimes you need to open the Bible. You need to read that scripture. That's just going to just brighten up your spirit for the day. You ever, you ever like just wake up and you just feel like, nah, feel down? Or, or you're, you're going through things and you just need, I just need something to lift me up. And one of the bad things that Christians do is they don't they don't talk and get close to other Christians. Christians have a habit of getting closer to people who are not Christian or people who say they're Christians, but there's no evidence of Christ. And what that means is, is when, when a Christian is going through something, a lot of times we hold it within ourselves. And we're not help, we're not we're not sharing with one another. We don't find another Christian that we can link our heart to, right? Where we can we can become as one as another brother or sister in, in, in Christ, where where we can share our thoughts and the intention of our hearts, where we can we can begin to to speak, so we can begin to to speak life into one another, right? As Christians, we fail that we fail in that area a lot. The Christians, we fail in that area, and this is something where we need to fix. We need to stop failing this area. Come together. That's why they call it your church family. Or, you know, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what we're, that's what we're doing. I tell all the time, I'm, I'm the pastor, but I'm in the same fight you're in. You know, we're building a church together. We're building the kingdom of God together. Just because I'm the pastor, I'm the one who has to put together the, the teachings, doesn't mean that I'm not in the same fight you are. I battle with the same same intentions of the heart, the same battles of the mind, the same the same, the same same thing of bone and marrow is trying to pull me one direction and the other direction with the spirit. I go through the same things. That's why it's important that we understand that we have one another to go through this, right? But sometimes you go through something, and as Christians, we don't always talk to one another. We, we kind of hold things back. Well, I'll tell them this, but I don't want to tell them that because that's going to really make me look bad. Or they may not understand that, or they're going to judge me. That's the biggest word a Christian uses. They're going to judge me. When all along, that person probably already gone through the same thing. And what they've gone through, they can help you. Or they need to know, that person may need to know that they're having the same thought or going through the same things. They need to know that they're not alone in these things also. Okay? But sometimes there's scriptures that just really stand out, make you feel a little warm and fuzzy inside, right? And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a couple of scriptures that I've used many a times over the years where I've had people tell me, how do you say those things? Right? How do you say that? How do I say what? Well, you just said that. And you, it sounded like you meant it. Like you you, you, you you believe it. I do believe it. How do I get that? That faith that you have. Well, I would tell people, it's easy. Follow me. Follow me around. Come be my best friend. Be a part of my life. And I'll show you how to have that faith. So when we read scriptures, it's good that these things give us these warm feelings. And it really does help us for that short term. But it's better when we got the full script, when we got the full scripture. And I'm going to give you an example. Philippians 4.13, Paul writes to the church of Philippi, and he says this, <clears throat> and here's a good scripture. Paul says to the, to, the, to the Philippian church, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That, man, that's a powerful scripture. When you're going through something, man, you can stand on that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. People who get new jobs and, and, they're, and they're struggling. The job I have, when I got hired at the job I have, I said to myself, what the heck am I doing here? I don't know what the heck this is. I wanted to quit. But then I had to remember, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So as a standalone scripture, it helps, right? You go through things in your life where, where we lose loved ones or, or, or relationships are being broken or the things. You got you to gotta remember, you're going to make it. Man. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I, alone, that scripture it's good and it helps you, right? 
Here's, here's another one. Uh, same chapter, Philippians 4, verse 19. Paul says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Isn't that an awesome scripture? Yeah. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Alone, that is a good scripture. We need that scripture because there's times in our lives where we're not feeling it. We're not feeling it. You ever not feel it? I just, I just ain't feeling it. This whole church thing—I'm not sure if this is right. I'm, I'm just kind of—I just think I need to do something else now. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling that I'm going to make it through this situation, this problem, through these people who are coming against me. I'm not. I'm not feeling. It. I'm not, my job's giving me a hard time. I'm not feeling this no more, right? And, and we go through these things, and then remember, Paul says in this one scripture. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You mean my, my, my rent's going to be paid? Well, my God will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. So alone, the scripture is good, right? It's a good scripture. So there's going to be scriptures that you can open up your Bible when you're going through things. And boom, that one scripture brings life. Here's another part Christians have. We open up the Bible, we read that one scripture, and we believe that that little band-aid is going to cover our gunshot wound. Because we're going through things that are so strong that we allow this one scripture to bring life to us and jump. It kick-started our heart again. But the battle that we're going through, we begin to think that our battle is bigger than that scripture. But if we would take time to find the contents of what was going on in Paul's life, why he wrote this scripture, what he was going through at the time when he was writing it, and how he was trying to how he was trying to pass his faith to someone else. The Bible says that that the kingdom of God is built. It's built by from faith to faith. That means that means the faith of one to the faith of another. And we always want to look to the front and say, "Well, it's the faith of the pastor. He's preaching and it builds our faith." This is true to an extent because of the teachings. However, you know that it's the faith amongst each other is where you're going to begin to build more. Right, it, 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 the church will never grow until the people of God grow. So it's the it's 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 the faith within yourself as you pass that faith to one another when you're going through something. Remember, why? So one of the biggest problems that Christians have is that we don't share with one another, right? So I want to read these scriptures in their content. Here's the backstory, though. Remember, Paul's the one who wrote to the church of Philippians. In the, church, the, the Philippian church, right? This is what he. This is what was going on in Paul's life. Paul was getting ready for a trial. They were persecuting Paul. You gotta understand, Paul before his name, his name conversion, he was Saul. He was a persecutor of Christians. He would go and get letters from the from the high priests, from the kings, and he would go and and imprison Christians, bring them back, and put them on trial for worshiping Jesus Christ. He was known to go out there and get them and stone them to death. He was there when Stephen, one of the one of the one of the disciples of Peter, after the ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven, when he when he said to give us seven men of good of good report to help serve table. Stephen was the, was one of those men. When they when Stephen got 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 uh, put to trial before the Pharisees, Paul was there at his conviction. When they said they took him out and they stoned Stephen to death, they took the clothes of Stephen and placed them at Paul's feet. This is who Paul was. Now, Paul has been converted. He's now a Christian. He's accepted Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ shows himself to him on the, on the road to Damascus, blinds him, and gets his attention. Now, Paul is now just as zealous, just as excited as he was before, but now he's doing it for Jesus. Now, well, how can Paul hit it? Christ. It wasn't that Paul, right? Paul didn't hate God. God. Paul loved God. Matter of fact, when Paul was persecuting the Christians, he thought he was doing the works of God. Yeah. He was. This is what he was taught. So now Paul has been converted to a Christian, and now he's out there ministering, preaching Jesus Christ to everyone. The resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and now it's his turn. The Pharisees are now persecuting him. He's on trial. He's getting ready for trial, and he's going to go. He's in, he's in prison, okay. And <clears throat> and the problem is, 
whenever you're going to be in jail at this time, your essential needs are not met by the government who imprisoned you. That means unless you have somebody who is going to come and bring you food, you don't eat. You know that there's places still to this day that in, in East Africa that still run this way. There's, there's third world country prisons that run this way, where when you get in prison, if somebody is not sharing their food with you in prison, which they're not going to do, or you have family coming in and bringing you daily food, you're not going to eat. You're not going to eat, which means your family can never go on vacation because they go on vacation, you ain't getting no food, right? This was Paul. Paul was on a, in trial. He was in prison. He was a single man. He didn't have his wife coming, and he was in he was at he was in the lowest point of his life. And unless somebody brought him food, he wasn't going to survive. This is what Paul. This is what was going on in Paul's life during this time. So in Philippians chapter four verse ten. This is what Paul writes. In the midst of this going on in his life, in the midst of all this happening in his life, this is what Paul is. So, so when we read the scripture by itself, power, right? And it gets us past. So it's a band-aid on a gunshot room. It gets us past that day. But when we read what Paul went through in order to say that, it will give us more life. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Paul says this. He says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at your last at last your care for me has flourished again remember he couldn't eat unless people brought it for him though you surely though you surely did care but you lacked opportunity now that i speak in regard to need for i have learned in whatever state i am to be content i know how to be abased, which means poor. I know how to abound, which means rich. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound, which is be blessed, and to suffer. To suffer need means to be without. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no churches shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you, you sent aid once and again for my distress. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruits that abound to your account. What he's saying is, I want you to be blessed. Verse 18. He says, indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from uh, Aphrodite the things sent from you. A sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. In verse 19, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So when we read the scripture as a standalone scripture, do you see what I'm saying? It, it, it can bring you a little bit of joy. But when you understand why Paul is saying the struggles that he went through, and even in those trials and the tribulation and starvation and, and the being forgotten and being in prison and knowing that his life... You know, when people were being in prison back then, it was typically a death, death sentence because people would forget about you when you go to prison. And they, and they stop talking to you. And they're no longer there. And if they don't show up, you don't eat. Paul knew that he was he was he he essentially was having a death sentence. And during his death sentence, he's saying, My God will supply all your needs to according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. He's saying, 
as bad as I am in the situation I have, I know that God is so much greater than I am that he's going to supply your needs. He says, in the midst of all this, greater is he that is in me. He understood these things. He understood this. So, so it's good to get the warm, fuzzy feeling, but in order to survive, in order to move forward, in order to understand that, you know what, God has so much more for your life, that the trials of life that you're going through are going to really, uh, they're, they're really going to be small compared to other things. That's why it's important that as a church you come together and you speak to one another, that we share with one another. I don't say we throw up on one another, right? We don't want to throw up on people. We don't want to be thrown up on, right? You know, people are just throwing garbage on you, huh? But we share together in Christ because there's things that we've gone through with one another that can help one another. Yeah. That's the health. That's a healthy church. When we get to speak to one another, say, you know what? I went through that before. You went through that? How? How did you go through that? People think, I guess it's a, a big compliment, but it's also kind of mind-boggling for me because I know my own life. People say, I, Pat, I, I just can't imagine you were in the streets. I can't imagine that you had that kind of life. I, just, I, can't, I can't picture that. Well, praise the Lord you can't picture that because of the life I have now. But the reality is that I had that life. The reality is that life is going to help you. Because when I tell you I understand I've been through that, you'll know it's true. But the thing is, I'm not the only one with that story. You have that story. You've gone through things. You've hurt. You've had pain. You've had temptation. The flesh has been battling with the spirit all the time. And there's people, even in our own church, that need to know that they're not the only one that goes through that. That other people go through that. Paul went through that. The church at Philippi went through that. This is why he's sharing it, right? So it's so much more. The word of God is more powerful. It's stronger. It's alive. I'm going to close with this. There's an old saying. It's, it's usually contributed to Confucius, right? I'm not teaching Confucius, but I'm going to tell you what it says. It's a simple one. Here's what Confucius says. He says, give a man a fish, and you'll feed him for a day. We've heard this before, right? Teach a man to fish, and you fed him for a lifetime. All right? You teach somebody how to fish, I mean, you, you, you give a guy a fish, he's going to eat, okay? But tomorrow he's going to be hungry again. So what good was it? But if you taught him how to catch a fish, and now he can cook his own fish, and he'll never starve again. This is a true statement. We can apply this to the Word of God as God's children. If we read a scripture and get a warm and fuzzy feeling, all we've done is we've eaten a fish for a day. But when we begin to seek God in scripture, we're learning how to fish. But we're never going to starve again. So it's important that we take time to read the Word of God, study the Word of God, understand the Word of God, ask one of the questions about the Word of God. You know where I get a lot of my, my input, my intellect about the Word of God from all the reading I do, right? But you know where I get more, a lot of it, a lot of it up, probably about the equal amount in from, is my fellowship with other pastors. Me and the other pastors, we talk all the time. The, especially the four pastors around here, we talk all the time. We'll call each other and we talk and 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 we'll give insight on what we're going to preach on and stuff like that to one another. Mm -hmm. And and I hear, I'll hear Pastor Robert will tell me something and, and he'll give me his little insight on a scripture he's just read and he's doing. I'm like, dang, that was good. I never thought of that. And Pastor Rudy and Pastor Peter, I mean, I hear these things. Pastor Annie and San Fernando, I hear these things and, the, and these things help me, right? And it brings intellect, right? So I'm getting it from other men of God, who are my friends, right? This is how we, this is how you survive. Amongst each other, there's going to be scripture that's really spoke to you in your life, that's really helped you. That your neighbor, that the person sitting next to you is going to really need. And it's going to be the intellect and the speaking of God through your life that's going to really help make them grow. So seeking God and the Word of God is, 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 is what's going to help us this night. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Go for it. So it was like 
calendars with the verse of the day. And is that... Those are good. Yeah. Inspirational. Yeah. My point is, those in inspirational scriptures come across all the time. There's apps you can sit there and they'll send you the scripture a day. And those are good. Because those are the inspirational scriptures. But that's a good that's a good question. Because those inspirational scriptures are just that. Inspirational. Right? A little boost, right? But if that is the only word of God that you're reading for the day, now we have trouble. Because you're only taking the joy in the one spot. And not finding the full word of God. You're not taking time to read the word of God. Be a part of the word of God. Find out. Like, like these two scriptures that I use. Right? Philippians 4.13 and 4.19. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's one of the scriptures that pops up on the daily word. The daily scripture. Inspirational scripture. Uh, my God shall supply your needs according to the riches and glory. Those are good inspirational scriptures, right? That's the same thing that happens when you get those those daily inspirational verses that come on the calendar and all that. Those are good, right? But let them be what triggers a thought. It's like, man, that was a good scripture. Why did he say that? Let me even find out and read it. Because if you would have read that scripture alone right there, that's the only thing you got out of it. But when I give you the background of what Paul was going through, where he was at in life, the struggles he was going through, that he was that was happening to him, to give you an understanding of what 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 was happening in, in, in his heart and his mind, being in captivity, and still was able to write those words. It brings a story to a whole different light, right? It brings more power to it. So alone, the scripture is warm and fuzzy, and you put a bandaid on a gunshot room. But when you read it, and you begin to to understand it. And see the background of it. You didn't put a band-aid on it. You had full-blown surgery and stitches. You're healed and walking around again. The other way, the band-aid's gonna fall off, and you're tomorrow you're gonna need that scripture again. The next day you're gonna need that scripture again. And you're just going from day to day to day to day. God wants to give you the strength to make you through life. That's what scripture's for. Amen. What if you just get a tattooed on you? Ah, stop it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you have to read Leviticus. The Bible says there's no tattoos. <laughs> well, uh, I was just going to say what really helps me is I listen to the woman's Bible study uh -huh. every morning. I know you know because I wake you up when I'm listening to it. But <laughs> wait, what time is the woman's Bible study? Wait, wait. This is daily. This is daily. Okay. Daily. Every day. Monday through Friday. What time is the Bible study? Four, six, ten minutes. Ten minutes to five in the morning every day. I hear these women in the background because she has it on speaker giving the word of God. And I'll tell you what, I've sat and I've listened to some of them. And I'm like, dang, these women know their word, man. They, they really know their word. They bring it. Yeah, and right now, for, for me, it's like every day is a chapter because we're doing First Samuel. So I've been hearing that. And it helps me. And it, I told you're saying about getting the Bible that helps you to what you did to you. Yeah. And now that I'm working, though where I help the department that I'm helping so I could get extra hours, they allow us to wear earbuds. So my thing is, is I want to stand in front of everybody that's not like this. I want you to buy me some earbuds so I can hear the Bible while I'm working. Because <laughs> that's going to help because I want, I want to hear it. Because it's like every day I hear a chapter in Samuel, so they did nine, chapter nine today. To help me to read back all the stuff that, because sometimes I cut it short. Like today, I cut it short, and I'm like, they can't hear me because I have them on me. And I'm like, sorry, ladies, I gotta go because I've got to work. But it help, it'll help me to continue that chapter. And so when you're at work, you'll be able to still hear it. It's yeah. only. Yeah. That's a good thing, Pastor. It is. No, it is. It is a good thing. It and they have thing. really good insight, and then they'll be like, you know, everybody. The people from that, the pastors by Mexico, sisters from Mexico, they're listening in and then they're telling what they just learned and what, you know, they just share everything what you really learned. I read books and I listen to books. And if, if I'm listening to a book or reading a book and does not have a lot of scripture as they're, 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 as they're writing, I stop. 
I, I, I want scripture. I want, I want, I want, I want their experience in God, not their opinion in life. Does that make sense? I, I want, I want, I want I, God. To be, I, I, that's yeah. good because I think that if you can hear it, but you want to be able to read it again, you know, if you just, it's just like hearing it is not the same as if you looked at because you can get a whole different thing out of it because you can read the Bible over and over, but it's always different. It's always changing because it's making us, you know, more alert to things. I want to give you one more example. Uh, Book of Ruth. <laughs> Where she goes. In the book of Ruth, Naomi is going through, through a major, major trial in her life. Okay. So Ruth turns to Naomi and she says, she says, mother-in-law, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Where you die, I will die, and where you are buried, I will be buried also. That is such a stinking powerful, powerful scripture of faithfulness, loyalty to one another. That's Christianity. That is Christianity. To, to, for somebody to tell you, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Your people are my people. I, I will be buried where you're buried. That means I am with you. Elijah. And Elisha. Elijah tells Elisha, go. Get out of here. Go. Don't worry about it. And Elisha wouldn't leave him. And he says, and Elijah turns to Elisha and says, what do you want? What do you, okay, what do you want already? You keep following me. <laughs> and Elisha turns to Elijah and says, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah says, if you're with me when I'm taken, then it'll be given to you. Right? See, in both stories, Naomi, her mother-in-law that she that Ruth told this to, Naomi, her husband just died. Ruth's husband just died, which was Naomi's son. Her other son had just died. So Naomi was feeling like the world was at the end. She said, God has judged me. I am ready to die. I don't want to do nothing else. But her fellow Christian, her sister, in, in the Lord, turned to her and says, No, me, don't worry about it. Where you go, I'm going to go. Your people are going to be my people now. And where you die, I'm going to die, Naomi. And where they bury you, I'll, I'm going to be buried right next to you. I will never leave you, Naomi. So when, now, that you know this, now that you know the story, man, isn't that so much more powerful? Elisha turns and tells Elijah, I just want a double portion of your spirit. I want I, the spirit of God that's in you, your faith. I want a double portion of your faith. Right? You ever seen somebody, they got so much faith, you're like, dang, I want to be faith, I want to be strong in faith like they are, right? And that's what this what Elisha tells Elijah. Now, how powerful is that for somebody to say, I want a double portion of the spirit of God is in your life? Well, Elijah was a prophet. Of course he had, a, he had a big spirit of God. But right before that happened, Elijah was sitting under a tree asking God to kill him because Jezebel was, was, was put out a bounty to kill Elijah. And he feared for his life, even though he had just killed hundreds of prophets of, of Baal. So now this is what's going on, and he's feeling so down, and he comes across Elisha, and Elisha turns around and tells him, all I know is you're the man of God that I want to set myself after. I'm going to follow you because I want a double portion of your spirit. And when you, when God comes and takes you, I'm going to be there to see it. So now that you see, I want to double your portion of your spirit. Oh, that's good. That's a powerful thing. But when you find out what Elijah was going through, how much did Elijah need to hear that at that time? 
Elijah needed to hear. Have you ever needed to hear somebody tell you something good? Elijah wanted to die. He was under a tree. He wanted to die. And here comes Elisha, who was just plowing the field with the oxen, doing his dad's work. He says, man, that's a man of God that I want to follow. Naomi, I just want to die. Don't even call. She changed her name to Mara, which means bitter. She goes, don't even call me Naomi no more. I have lost my joy. Call me Mara. I just want to die. No, I'm going to be with you forever. How powerful is that? The word of God is powerful. And that in, in keeping together, together, brothers and sisters, keeping together, that's how we survive. Amen. 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 We're going to close right there. Amen. So I hope this helped you. I hope this helped you tonight. Good, powerful, read scripture. Don't forget, 8 o'clock tomorrow night to 8 o'clock Friday night, we're fasting. Um, we got prayer Friday at 7 o'clock. We're going to come in, we're going to pray and seek God for for the for the revival and for the outreach on Saturday. Make yourself available Saturday, please. Be here Saturday at 11. The four churches will be here and we're going to we're going to go out, we're going to hit the streets. Um, we're going to knock on doors. We're all, we're going to we're going to get out there. We're going to make a bunch of noise. I might even bring out the 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 speaker for street preaching. But we're going to go out there and make some noise. These churches around here are coming to help us. This is our church. They're coming to help you. Okay, they're coming to help you because this is your church. So be here on Saturday, 11 o'clock. Amen? Amen. So God bless you guys. Let's bow our hearts. Amen. As we close in prayer. Come on, Father, we thank you, God, tonight, God, for your word, for your message, God. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, as you just help us, God, that we will <coughs> seek your face, God, in scripture, God. That we would lean upon one another, God. Link our hearts together as one, God. As we fight this good fight of faith together, God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.